Good morning and welcome to virtual worship with First Baptist Church of Martinsville this second Sunday after Easter. I am grateful today for our worship team that has gathered to make worship possible today. For Becky Collins, our Minister of Music, Baxter Jennings, our church organist. For Joe Collins, our videographer, Tom Hall, who is our sound technician. For William Underwood, our lay reader and singer. And Linda Dorr, who will edit and post this video to our website for us. And we are always grateful for our church staff for making sure that our bulletins are made available to you on paper and online. We are going to continue to worship together, even in these odd times of physical distance. I encourage you to introduce yourselves online. Let folks know you are joining together in virtual community this morning. If you're on Facebook, you can comment on the post on our Facebook page and let us know that you are with us today. You can find a copy of our church bulletin on our website under services or linked here in the comments on Facebook. If you are listening by phone, you may already have a copy of our paper bulletin in, our, in your hand. And if you don't, please let the church office know. We would love to send one to you. Right now, of course, in-person worship isn't possible. And we have moved all of our worship and our studies to virtual platforms like the one you are watching or listening to today. And beginning this week, we will also be offering both Wednesday evening and Thursday morning Bible studies on Zoom. And if you aren't already signed up to receive our e-newsletter in your email inbox, we ask you, go ahead and do that. Go to our latest news page on our website and sign up or call the church office and we'll be glad to add you to that list. That will allow you to receive links to our Zoom meetings for Bible study. It will also give you an opportunity to know what our church is up to in loving God and serving our neighbors in this community. If you are calling in today, you can also call in to those Bible studies on Wednesday evening and Thursday morning. You will use the same call-in number and meeting ID. The, uh, the times for those are Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Note that is a little bit later than our normal Wednesday nights. And Thursday morning at 10 p.m., the regular time for our Thursday morning Bible study. Also remember today that if you are a church member, you can now give online. Uh, if you're not a church member, you can also give online, but we of course want to encourage those who are regular attenders and givers to this congregation uh, to m either mail in their pledge or donation or give online at our website. We are grateful for your continued generosity. And throughout the rest of the month of April, we continue to raise funds for our Cooperative Baptist Fellowship offering for global missions. If you have not yet had a chance to give, we are collecting for two more weeks, and we would love to surpass our goal by quite a bit. So if you are able to give to that, just put that in your memo line on your check or online. We would love to continue to support our field personnel, even in these times of physical distance. So we are going to now hear from our field personnel directly in a video from the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. We lived in Kabul before coming to the United States. I was sending my kids to private schools. Once they left the house, there was a big explosion close to our house. We were the victims of war in our country. My brother lost his legs during the war, and my mom, she was escaping from one place to another place. <laughs> Since I started working with the U.S. government for about one and a half years, we felt that something's going to happen on us. So we came to the United States in 2015. Brooke was a medical doctor in Afghanistan and had worked with one of our U.S. government contractors. 
which allowed them to come here to the United States. With my workings, my kids are going to school, they're happy, my wife is learning English. So it makes me very happy. One day, Karen's brought some supplementary stuff for my son. We found her exceptional personality. Exceptional. As we get support, assistance from this country, from the United States, uh, we try to be uh, useful and fruitful, at least do something for the United States. Thank you, Baxter. And thank you to our CBF field personnel for all that they do. May we give generously. Now, friends, would you join me in a call to worship? You can find a copy of this in your bulletin, whether you've got that electronically or on paper in your hand. We will read responsively. I will read the regular prints, and you will respond in the bold prints. We enter a virtual gathering space once again this season. We worship together in spirit and in truth, though not in person. We pray, sing, and listen to God's word despite the fear that pervades our community. We trust Christ's peace, a peace given freely, despite our doubts and fears. 
we know the Holy Spirit is among us, blowing with a powerful and hopeful wind of change. We feel the presence of Christ, the one who died and rose again and brings us eternal life. We submit to God's leading in this time of transformation. We experience the joy of Easter morning every time we celebrate all God has in store for us. Would you pray with me? God, we are in a liminal space, one where chaos and disorder have confused our lives, yet one where we also find time to rest and receive your peace. We sit with the disciples behind our locked doors and wait in fear. And when you appear, we are given a spirit of peace only you can give. Hold us in your grace this morning, offering us that same hopeful word you offered those frightened disciples that Easter evening so many years ago. We pray this all in the name of your Son, the risen Christ, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would join me in singing Alleluia, Alleluia, hearts to heaven. Sin 
Our Old Testament lesson this morning is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let, yet let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 19. <clears throat> chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with him. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord.
Would you join me in a morning prayer? Risen Christ, our eternal Savior, like the disciples, we are gathered together the week after Easter, locked away in our own homes, wondering whether it is true, marveling at the possibility and daring to hope. Like the disciples, we are sometimes afraid, sometimes full of doubt. But in your extravagant generosity, your boundless love, you appear to us in our fear and love us in our doubts and grant us oceans of your peace. Thank you for loving us as we are. Teach us not to hide from our doubt, but to recognize it as a door to the mystery of you and to deeper faith. After all, the disciples' fear had, became, had become a visitation as they saw you among them, risen and triumphant. Thomas's doubt became a moment of revelation as he saw and touched you and finally believed. This morning, we pray for the many people in our society who have no faith at all. There are so many who live without hope, without knowledge of your resurrection, without your light in their lives. Grant us the courage to live as witnesses to your resurrection. Risen Christ, be light in our world. We pray for those who join us in worship this morning who find it difficult to believe today. Lord knows they're not alone, but in the best of company, even Christ's own disciples struggled to believe all they had seen and heard. Loving Christ, it is your peaceful presence that removes all fear and erases all doubt. So come and grant these doubting Thomases in our midst, including me, your presence and your peace. And grant all of us living Christ, renewed faith and great courage to face these days ahead. Amen. Please join us in singing this morning a beautiful hymn uh, sung to the tune of Handel's Judas Maccabeus, Thine is the Glory. song. 
Though you and I are a full week from Easter morning today, the beginning of the text we read today in John has only moved a few hours forward from Sunday morning. Jesus has only just resurrected, and it's now Sunday evening. And the disciples, fearful of the religious leaders who had condemned Jesus to death, were huddled in a house with doors locked. You're probably at home yourself right now. You may have been there at some, for some time at this point. You might also be afraid of death. There's a virus running rampant all over the world that can make the most vulnerable ill unto death. We aren't facing public execution like Jesus' disciples may have been, but we are definitely facing the potential of illness and death when we venture outside of our locked homes right now. I wouldn't describe this season in our lives as peaceful. There's job loss, loss of security, loss of social interaction, there's fear, there's anxiety. We're either afraid of the virus itself or we are afraid of what beating the virus is going to do to our livelihoods. We are in our locked rooms right now, struggling to believe in hope, just like those first disciples. I don't know about you, but if there's anything I have been praying for in recent weeks, it's peace. I just want that sense of calm that's been missing in the world. I don't want to fret about the next news conference that will continue to change how I live my life. I'm concerned for my family's health, for my health, for the health of our church staff and their families, for all of the little children we care for day in and day out at our early learning center. So dear room full of disciples except Thomas, I understand you and your feelings so much right now. My world has been shattered and I haven't even lost anyone. I think of those disciples having lost a friend and a rabbi to execution. I think of those today who have lost loved ones to this dread disease and so many others. And I think, where is the peace? I've preached and taught in recent weeks that we ought to be finding some peace in our Sabbath time. And I do still believe that. This fallow season we have will no doubt make our soil more fertile overall. But not so much for those whose lives are lost, and not for those whose livelihoods are so deeply affected they may never fully recover. And I realize that my peace will not come from my own good youth, uh, use of my Sabbath time. It will only come from Christ and what he brings to our lives in the midst of chaos. And thankfully, locked doors don't keep Jesus and his peace out. Even in our darkest hours of anxiety and chaos, he can enter our locked away spaces and offer us hope. He gave those first disciples peace, and he sent them to do the same for others. He gave those first disciples the Holy Spirit, and he told them to go and offer this kind of forgiveness that he offers. There's both a comforting happening here and a commissioning. We are given peace, but we are also given a job to do with that peace. When I think of peace, I'm often thinking of the absence of war or violence. I think that's what a lot of us think of. But I wonder if the kind of peace that Jesus is offering here 
is more akin to the Hebrew understanding of peace, shalom. That kind of peace isn't just the absence of something, but it is a fullness of living. Frederick Beekner says that shalom means having everything you need to be holy and happily yourself. Beekner goes on to say that Jesus, as the Prince of Peace, talked about not just bringing peace but a sword. But then he offers peace to his disciples. What, what does that mean exactly? But Beekner says that for Jesus, peace seems not simply to be the absence of struggle, but the presence of love. In this world, we will most definitely have trouble. But Jesus leaves us a peace, a peace that comes from his loving presence among us, a peace that passes all our understanding. And when a week later, those of us doubting finally meet Jesus, like Thomas did, we hope that Jesus continues to offer that kind of tangible grace that Thomas got. Not judgment, but peace. Peace be with you, Jesus said. Do not doubt, but believe. Our doubts, like Thomas's, are an opening door to the grace Jesus has to offer us. And I think that's good news. We will overcome doubt, not because of our own willpower, but because Christ offers us grace to do so. We may not get to touch Christ's body, the nail-scarred hands, the side, like Thomas and the other disciples did in those first couple of weeks. But we are offered that same grace through the witness of those who have long shared this story of hope and the resurrection. We are a people touched spiritually by the risen Christ. We get to feel that same peace, not just one week later, but millennia later, because Christ never stops offering that grace-filled and love-filled presence we need in the times of chaos. We are all those disciples. And by the way, it's not just poor Thomas who gets the bad rap for doubting. All of those disciples doubted at one point or another. Mary Magdalene doubted at the empty tomb and needed to hear Jesus' voice call her name. Peter and John doubted and were perplexed and didn't understand what was happening with those leftover linens in the tomb. Those disciples who were lucky enough to be present that evening in the locked house got to see Jesus' hands and side, and thus their disbelief was pretty short-lived. So yes, we are all going to struggle from time to time with our faith, but what's beautiful isn't that we overcome it but that Christ overcomes it for us with his presence and his peace. Just as God breathed air, that is that same Hebrew word for spirit, into the nostrils of the first human, so Jesus breathes the peace of the Holy Spirit onto the disciples. Preacher Fred Craddock described this special imparting of God's spirit on humanity like this. He said, God took this creature made out of clay, held it up as a mother holds her baby, and breathed, and it became a living soul like God. And God said, this one is like me. I am proud of the squirrel. I love the elephant. The horse is good, the mule's nice, and I sure do like those llamas. But the one that's like me, I have breathed into this one, my own life. This is why human beings are not content, if they are real human beings, with just eating and drinking and working and showing off and bragging and dying. Real human beings long for God, search the heavens, write poetry, play music, 
spread art all over the world, and think of the things of God. We human beings perhaps even spend time pondering if after we die, we will live again since we have the breath of God. This is extraordinary. Fred Craddock gets it right a lot. This promise of God's breath, God's spirit, God's very self in us is even more pronounced as Jesus conquers death and enters into the presence of the disciples that fearful Easter evening. And even more so when he graces Thomas's doubt with God's eternal peace. And that peace is long lasting, shared among witnesses to God's glory in Christ, even 2,000 years later on a video on the internet. While we are holed up for a season, trying to find community among other disciples who can't come into our homes and be fearful with us, my prayer for us is that we recognize the peace that slips in despite our locked doors. A peace given only by God through Christ during our darkest hours. When we can't hold one another in person, I hope that we are holding one another in prayer. Pray for one another's peace. Pray and receive God's peace. Your heart's locked door, your house's locked door, these won't keep that peace away from you. And for that we say, thanks be to God. A hymn that has become one of the church's favorites in previous years, Because He Lives. God stand His Son, they called Him Jesus. Can face 
It has been wonderful to have you join us for virtual church, the second Sunday of Easter. While we miss your hugs and your handshakes in this season, we are standing in solidarity to beat this virus together in love. We look forward to continuing to study and keep in touch and worship and pray together in the coming weeks. Join us again next week here on Facebook, YouTube, or our website for virtual church as we continue the celebration of Eastertide. So now I leave you with this benediction. Friends, may we reach out to one another, knowing that all we need in peace is in Christ, even when times are turbulent. May we love each other with phone calls and letters and video chats. May we hold one another in prayer. And may the joy of Christ's resurrection inspire us day by day. <laughs>